All right, what's going on guys? It is your boy TKD wants to be here back again with another video here on PlayStation Source And before we get started on all this PS5 talk we had to talk about today Make sure to leave a like on the video so stay subscribed to PlayStation Source to keep up with the latest and greatest in Play Edition. Of course as well down down below in the description You can find our links to our Twitter discord anchor link all that good stuff to listen to our podcast shows and all that good stuff You can find down below, but uh, we do have some interesting updates regarding PS5 that came out this week uh, I'm sure you guys have seen them you guys read the title you guys see the thumbnail and we're gonna jump straight into it So what does Sony trademarking the PS5 in the countries mean? What does it mean for them to add the PS5 stuff to the website as well as their interesting comments by the chief financial officer in terms of the price of the PS5. Let's get right into it. Starting up here, we briefly touched on this actually on Safe Slot Podcast episode four that was uploaded on Wednesday. Make sure to check that video out as well. Very, very good podcast. You know, very good episode. Uh, if I say so myself, you know what I'm saying. So definitely go check out that, uh, as well as you know, links to the podcast services uh, down below as well. And so on that podcast, we did talk about how Sony has been steadily and gradually trademarking the terms PlayStation Five and PS Five in a variety of different countries. Uh, you know, in recent events. So that includes countries like, of course, the U.S., Switzerland, New Zealand, and a bunch of other ones, etc. I have examples up here on the screen, but they have been doing those trademarks and making sure that the PlayStation 5 name and the PS5, whether you call it either or, is secured in those countries. And I believe that's just clearly pointing to them kind of ramping up and uh, overall just finalizing details for a proposed reveal event at some point in the future. And while we did have those initial rumors about it coming out in February, uh, you know, the event happening in February, and I now no longer believe that just because it's February 4th, I'm sorry, 5th, excuse me, as of this recording, and we haven't had any word yet, uh, other than some words that we have on the website that we will talk about in a little bit. But those are our, our only things about, you know, a any sort of event that we have. So uh, for right now, I'm going to suspend my guess of February. I guess maybe there could be a late February event, but now I kind of think it's going to be March. That's my final, you know, I think we'll, we'll definitely get something of a reveal event in March for sure, right? I think that's the new target that we're looking at in terms of this proposed reveal event, right? And so while the trademarks are also telling of, you know, Sony and them kind of prepping for PS5, there's also a lot of things about them updating the website as well. So this happened yesterday on February 4th. The official PlayStation website was updated to reflect some changes and some things about PS5 and to make way on the website for PS5 news and content and, and uh, different things of that ilk, right? And so the page that you can see now that's up right now on, on the website for PlayStation, the, the PS5 section of it doesn't have a lot, but it does have some things that are pretty interesting as well that I want to bring to, I want to bring to everyone's attention, right? So we have PlayStation 5 is coming, launches holiday 2020. So those are, you know, things that we knew already. We knew the name of the console as well as when it's launching, but they go on to say a little bit of an excerpt here that I think was quite interesting. So they say here that, quote, we've begun to share some of the incredible features you can expect from PlayStation 5, but we're not quite ready to fully unveil the next generation of PlayStation. Sign up below to be among the first to receive updates as we announce them, including news on the PS5 release date, PS5 price, and the upcoming roster of PlayStation 5 launch games. And so they had that to say about PS5 as a whole and that they're not quite ready to unveil the PlayStation, you know, 5 and 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 do the whole re reveal event type thing, but they do want you to sign up uh, and below you can see a place to add your email, your name and stuff like that and be able to I guess enter in this like PS5 specific newsletter. However, when I was trying to sign up, I couldn't sign up. I don't know what it was. I don't know why they they uh, would somebody let me in the newsletter, but they they just would not let me in, in the in the newsletter. Not sure if it was an issue with, you know, my end or the way I put the emails I don't know but I cannot sign up for this I'm gonna try again later but not but nonetheless I'm gonna know right like obviously I'm gonna be there day one I'm gonna be at not at the reveal event but I'm gonna be watching the reveal event I mean Sony if you want to invite me you know I will gladly come to the reveal event absolutely I would love to right but that's all we got here with that so I think with the coupling of the trademarks being filed as well as this website update I think that we are definitely in the final steps to them announcing this reveal event right we are definitely creeping up things are heating up right and I think uh, we're we're about to turn on the oven in terms of PS5 that was a horrible 
analogy. But there was also another thing I wanted to bring up involving because in this excerpt, right, they do say that, you know, be the first to receive updates um, on a variety of different things about PS5 and one of them being the PS5 price, which I think was interesting that they said here. If we take into account the words that were said by the chief financial officer at Sony. So this, I believe, was in an interview of some sort. I forgot exactly which interview it was. My apologies on that. But again, links in the description. So everything I talk about here as well, links are in the description. And so I got this from Push Square. And uh, they, they had some sort. Well, I don't think it was them interviewing the chief financial officer of Sony. But the chief financial officer had some comments to say nonetheless about the price of PS5, right? And why they haven't really nailed down uh, a price. And so really all we have from him is that he says that nailing down a price is very difficult. And he brings up a lot of different factors that make it difficult. That being, of course, manufacturing costs and promotion of the console. Um, he then goes in to say uh, some things about the competition, which of course is Xbox Series X that I found very interesting. And so we're gonna read these quotes in full. He starts here by saying, quote, what is not very clear or visible is because we are competing in the same space so it's very difficult to discuss anything about the price at this point of time and so obviously that's you know him just reiterating that uh you know what what we don't know is because we are competing with the opposition with xbox right and so we definitely want to keep our cards uh close to us and keep our cards at play and not you know have the the opposition if you will knowing our cards uh a little bit too early and so it looks like they're you know holding off the price which i mean i can see that right that definitely doesn't make sense because i feel like microsoft might be doing the same thing in a way but he does continue on with saying quote it's a question of balance and because it's a balancing act it's very difficult to say anything concrete at this point of time but when i said smooth transition we mean that we will definitely choose the optimal approach and that we will try to have the best balance so that we will be profitable during the life of this product and so i think it's interesting that he said this balance here right that like they are trying to achieve this balance where you know they are going to have a price that is fair for the overall general consumer and the hardcore as well while also coupling that strategy you know with like having a nice price i'd say uh to also couple it with the backwards compatibility f factor of ps5 and that you will in theory have any ps4 digital or physical game be able to be played on ps5 natively day one right so having that coupling uh to entice the consumer to buy a ps5 right while also keeping playstation and sony profitable from a hardware sales standpoint right so that way they're not you know necessarily at a loss in terms of selling your hardware because i know in the past we've seen a lot of different companies just sell hardware to push software like 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 that's been a thing that we've had for a lot uh you know in this industry in terms of like they just want you to first have the hardware and then they'll make their money back and probably tenfold honestly off of software and so i do like his like candidness on how he is very just straight up about how you know we want to have a fair price for the ps5 and be able to you know entice consumers to move from ps4 to ps5 as fast as possible however uh i still feel that you know they 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 have a price in mind i highly doubt that you know they are like wishy-washy on the price because when it comes to you know buying the parts and you know even though yes they are they are bought in bulk so when you look at the price of like the card that they'll be you know putting in the ps5 right now we have a different price as a consumer as opposed to the business where they can buy in bulk and they have to buy in bulk for the console manufacturing right so i understand that standpoint um but i still feel like they definitely have a price and they're just hiding it so that Microsoft doesn't know the price. And I think that's completely fine. But I think my personal guess, while I think 400 is possible, once again, I will be on the record and say this, I think $500 is the price of the PS5. I think that is what we're going to get when they started to, you know, discuss all the Wired.com features that they had. Uh, well, no, they discuss the features of the ps5 in the wired.com interview there we go um you know it sounds like it would be in the 500 dollar price range at least at least just from what i was observing so let me know what you guys think in the comments below what do you guys think the ps5 price will be what are you willing to pay for it let me know your thoughts down in the comments below and make sure also while you are down there down there to check out our description where you can find again our twitter anchor link discord link all the good stuff make sure to follow those links down below in the description and of course if you liked the video enjoyed it if you liked the video, like the video if you enjoyed it, as well as stay subscribed to PlayStation Source to keep up with the latest and greatest in PlayStation. Thank you for watching, and as always, greatness awaits.